Hi everyone, this is Shubhangi and uh, I am a very recent University of Waterloo graduate and I was enrolled in their software engineering program with honors in co-op. So I thought I'd take this opportunity and uh, make a video about the co-op program at University of Waterloo since I have been getting a lot of messages asking me about how it all works and uh, what are the salaries, etc. So let's get started. What is co-op program, right? In the easiest terms, co-op program is like an internship program that's combined with your study part of the degree, right? So there are a lot of programs in University of Waterloo which have a compulsory co-op, like most engineering programs I know have co-ops. If you're in engineering, you'll have to do co-op and so on. Uh, there are also a lot of regular programs. So the regular programs, I think students can still do summer internships, but um, we'll get to that. For example, in India, every year is divided into two semesters. So similarly, even here, uh, we study for eight total semesters for a full degree, right? But every term or the semester of the term that is at University of Waterloo is only four months long. So in a 12 month year, there are three terms, right? Uh, 12 divided by three is four. So we have three terms per year and they're labeled as fall, winter and summer. So fall is from September to December. Winter is January to April and uh, summer is May to August, right? Now, every term can either be a study term or a work term. So the study term is when we actually study, right? We take courses uh, and we study full time and work term is when we do internships. Now, depending on what sequence of co-op you get into, which term will be study of work will be decided based on that. So it's not fixed that, okay, every year only summer is when you will do the internship. No, like um, there are sequences, right? So for example, there is a stream eight. So they call it streams or sequences. They're both the same thing. So for example, in software engineering, there's only one sequence or stream, which is called stream eight. The way it works is that uh, when you come to the university, so you start in September, right? You always start in fall or mostly you start in fall. So you study for two terms. So now two terms means eight months, right? So September to December is the first term. So we call it one A because it's the first half of the first year and then uh, another four months is 1B, which is the second half of the first year, right? So after that, in April, I have completed first year. And that's when my first co-op happens or the internship. Uh, it's just a coincidence that it aligns with the summer term. So then I'll go for my first internship. So I'll go from May to August for my first internship. And then I come back on campus. And then I study for the rest of the four months that are left, right? August to December. That'll be 2A. So I've started my second year. And this is the first half of the second year. Now stream eight has alternate co-ops and study terms after that. So as soon as I finish 2A, I'll do another internship. Then I'll come back on campus, do 2B, which is my rest of the second year. Then I'll go back on, on for my internship again, then come back, do 3A internship, 3B internship, 4A internship, 4B. And 4B is where I've completed my eight study terms and that's when I will graduate. So uh, if I were to summarize each co-op, it has to be four months, right? So you work full time for those four months. The university has certain requirements, like uh, it has to have the minimum pay uh, or salary, it has to be 16 weeks long, it has to have some good amount of experience for the candidate to for count that experience as a co-op experience. So if you're in a co-op program, it's mandatory for you to, so you're given six co-op opportunities throughout your um, undergrad journey, right? So you have the, I think depending on the program, you have to do a certain number of minimum co-ops to graduate from that co-op program. So uh, if I remember correctly, um, you needed five co minimum of five co-ops out of the six to actually uh, be done properly to graduate. But during COVID, they adjusted a few things. So that could be a little different when you apply or when you're going. So that will be easily available on the website or even when you come to the university, you can talk to your advisors and clear that all out. But um, to summarize, yes. So now if you were to calculate the total duration of the program right of your undergrad so i said that we have eight study terms and we have six co-op terms so that's 14 terms in total and each term irrespective of study of work is four months long so 14 into four will give you 56 months which is four years and eight months so that's why the honors of engineering co-op program for example at university of Waterloo is four years and eight months or a lot of other programs so almost five years and um 
this sequence can depend. So their computer engineering, for example, has two possible streams, stream four and stream eight. So they, the way stream four works for them is like they come on campus in fall. So they study for four months and they immediately have an internship. And then they come back and then finish their first year and then keep alternating. So there are different sequences and patterns. So in general, University of Waterloo students keep going off campus, keep coming on campus and so on. So how do we get these internships? Like, for example, let's talk about the computer engineering stream for people who apply for this internship as soon as they come. So if you come in September and you have to start your internship in January, for example, if that's the case, right? This is like the worst case scenario, I think. So you land in September because you have to start your internship in January. You will start applying and interviewing in November. So that is why the, there's a very important and um, it's, it's almost like a requirement for you to be hitting the ground running, right? So as soon as you come, you have to make sure that you have your resume, add things to your resume, you know, do side projects, do volunteer stuff, uh, attend clubs on campus. There are a lot of things you can do. Which I'll make a separate video on, uh, like how to succeed in your first year and so on. But uh, basically, there's a lot of focus on that from the very beginning. And that is why University of Waterloo students are so employable towards the end. Uh, when they graduate, right? Because they're doing this from their very first year and they've done it six times before they're actually getting their full-time job. So that is something there. So now how does the university help in this, right? The university has its own portal where a lot of companies come and post their jobs because they also want the good students. There are different levels of jobs there, obviously, um, ranging from beginners to uh, advanced experience in different things. You have to make a resume. You have to apply on that using that portal and uh, if you're shortlisted, they'll interview you. Obviously, a lot of other things count in too, especially towards your later co-ops. The grades matter much less than the actual experience you've gained. And yes, like it's difficult to get to your first few co-ops, right? Obviously, you don't have any experience and you're trying to get some uh, stuff on your resume. But after one or two co-ops, things start become super easy, right? You're so used to giving interviews. Um, every time you give for example, five to 10 interviews, by the time you're in a third co-op, you've already given 20 interviews. So you don't, you know what kind of questions they ask, how to answer certain questions. Let's talk about the benefits of co-op, right? So, I mean, I don't have to explicitly say it, but if you're graduating with six internships, you are very employable. And you, every internship you meet 15, 20 people, you keep them in your contacts. By the time you finish six internships, you have a contact network of 60 to 70 good working professionals. Obviously, the other advantage is money. Talk, let's talk about from an international perspective, right? A uh, lot of students uh, come here assuming that they'll make a lot of money from co-op and then they can pay their tuition. That's an optimistic scenario, I would say. Let's talk about salaries. So um, in the beginning, the first, so the way students are paid here is they're paid per hour. Generally, mostly they're paid per hour. So you work eight hours a day, like for example, nine to five, and you work five hours a week. So you work 40 hours a week, right? In the first few co-ops, okay, these numbers are very vague. It could vary a lot. Person to, I'm gonna say that most students, like in, let's talk about engineering or software engineering or computer science, you do get co-ops from $18 an hour to $21 an hour. Like this, so it's a okayish estimate to have. So you can calculate that, right? Like you're working uh, for, for example, $18 an hour for 40 hours a week, and you work for 16 weeks, which is four months. So you can calculate that. Out of that, you pay some taxes, you have your living expenses and so on. So let's assume like this is pretty much the salary for the first three co-ops, right? Again, like it could be much more if you get very good co-ops, um, but, without being too optimistic about the things. Then after that, you might getting you might start getting really good co-ops, right? So for example, you enter the big four or you enter all these companies like Microsoft, Google, or or the banks, or a lot of good companies, big mid-sized companies exist. That is when you might start start earning more, right? Then it can rise up to thirty to forty dollars an hour or even more depending on the job profile and a lot of other things. So you can calculate accordingly how much of it will you make. And then uh, I'll make a separate video about the expenses. So you can use that to deduct your daily expenses and like monthly expenses from that. But um, so yeah, so co-op can be a very good source if you use it correctly. 
it can it can have a lot lot of benefits right it, uh, if you use it correctly you'll have a lot of benefits oh um so it's not all rosy though right let's talk about the bad parts of co-op or not really the bad but the difficult parts of co-op so yeah as i mentioned it's not very easy to land your first few co-ops i know people who struggled who've um, found it hard to find co-ops and it's not that they're bad students right it's just that you have so much competition and um, there are terms like for example if it's a non-summer term like for tech internships a lot of companies open up their internships in summer so for example your co-op is in the fall term which is september to december maybe a lot of companies might not have their internship slots open at that time so there are a lot of factors here but rest assured it all works out for most people but we just have to make sure that we work hard and um, obviously like ask for help when needed and so on like the university has uh, resume critique workshops and even like for software engineering the software, the software engineering society they help you with the resume critique and so on interview preps and there are a lot of resources so at the end of the day it's just about working hard and asking for help uh, when needed right another uh, thing about co-op is that when you do co-op, especially as an international student, you might get co-ops in different cities or even countries, like depending on how you apply, right? Or what you apply to. If you get co-ops in different cities or countries, you will be continuously moving around, right? For most, uh, like for example, if you have a four month study term and then you have a four month co-op, you will be in Waterloo, like Waterloo is a city. So you'll be in Waterloo when you're studying and then the next four months you have to go somewhere else then you come back four months then you go somewhere else so you're basically living out of your two suitcases shifting is a pain right like um it's costly it's uh labor intensive so you want to keep your stuff to the minimum and you have to find a place in every new city you have to find roommates so it's not the easiest of the things but yes it does prepare you for a lot of things in the future and uh, it makes you very adaptive and a lot of advantages to that but yes that can be difficult so that's a little bit of a harsh part of the co-op being an international student but I, if you have relatives here i would encourage you to take their help and if you have friends here i would encourage you to help each other because you will need it <laughs> right when you're moving around is what i mean but even with co-ops and everything okay so uh i guess the last part which i'll just quickly cover let me know if you guys want to hear more about it and i can make like a separate video but um the companies people work at right when people usually start they most of them start at startups right like small companies even on campus um jobs and a lot of other things so when you do your first few co-ops you'll have um like you'll be working at companies which might not be known as much right but most people let's talk about for example cs or software engineering most people have the opportunity to work at one of the renowned companies at least once right obviously if it's the choice not to continue and work at a startup then that's a different thing but they always get a chance and why not right if you've had five experiences you're applying to some company you definitely have an advantage over the other applicants especially from other universities like let's say okay most university of waterloo students will have six internships but what about other universities right they might have three or four or the others might be part-time in, uh, internships and so on so you definitely have an edge over these students mm, uh, i guess another thing that i should cover here is a lot of people ask me how easy is it to work in the states after uh, like while you're studying at University of Washington. So I'll make a separate video about full time because that requires a lot of different aspects and a lot of different things to be reviewed. So let's talk about how difficult is it to find internships in the US uh, while you're studying at University of Waterloo. Uh, I'm going to talk about computer science internships in specific because those are the ones I've mostly seen uh, that are readily available in the States and that's where of people have been getting so software engineering computer science so basically software developer roles or product management roles right then you apply i have seen that a lot of these companies first either have a summer cohort right so they have a summer acceptance so most people get in into the summer cohorts but because these a lot of these companies know that you know so waterloo has this kind of program where students could be finding internships even in fall or winter they have certain programs specifically just for University of Waterloo. So Microsoft, for example, recruits throughout the year for all three terms. 
So um, I have personally done a summer internship, a fall internship, and a winter internship at Microsoft. And obviously, like when I went there in summer, there were a lot of much more interns from a lot many universities. Whereas in fall and winter, I could mostly just see a few other University of Waterloo interns. So uh, those are a few things. But being an international student is not a problem there, right? Because as an international student, you go on a J1. So J1 is the visa that you need to work uh, like as an intern in the United States. So mostly I haven't seen people having an issue with that. So if you have been uh, like if you've signed your offer, then the company helps you apply. Mostly the company helps you apply for the J1 and then you can just go and uh, work there. Yes, the US rolls pay more than the Canadian rolls. Also, the US dollar is stronger compared to the Canadian dollar. If you compare in terms of the Indian rupee, uh, you can see the conversion rates. So there are advantages, disadvantages, depends on how you want to structure that. But yes, there are opportunities and it a lot of people do it. So it is very possible to do that. OK, so I think I have covered most of the information that I wanted to share about co-op. Uh, one thing I would like to add is that co-op programs also exist in other faculties, right? So there you have um, arts has co-op, arts and business has co-op, uh, math has co-op. So the type of jobs you get, the opportunities, the salaries, these might vary a little bit, but the core structure of co-op that you work for four months uh, for all your co-ops and then you study for other four months and so on remains the same. There are one or two links um, that I can put in the description, which you can use to check the sequences. But um, I think this much information is good to make a decision of whether you want to attend Waterloo or not. And once you're in, definitely you have a lot more resources to access. Okay, so I hope you like this video. And uh, if there's any other thing or any other topic that you would like me to make a video on, mention it in the comments. Thank you.